Hey guys and welcome to my workbench. Today I'm going to talk to you about the O-Scale KD Coupler. I'll show you some tips, uh, techniques that I use, uh, some tools, materials that you might need. Um, I'm sure a lot of the HO guys, most of the HO guys are very familiar with KD couplers. The three rail scale O-Scale guys are probably pretty familiar with the O-Scale coupler. And uh, there's some high railers like myself that use it quite a bit. Well, pretty much exclusively now. I convert all my cars, most of the engines, uh, the engines that I don't have fixed pilots for, I convert those over to fixed pilots and use KD couplers. And I'm sure there's quite a few high rail guys out there that want to use KDs, but they're intimidated by them. Um, they don't know a lot of information about them, what to use, how to do it, what not. So I'm going to talk to you about that. I'll show you some of the techniques that I use, some of the tools that I use. Just like anything else in this hobby, I'm sure there's a hundred different ways to do it. There's no right or wrong way to do it. I'm just showing you the way that I do it, what works best for me. I've been using KD couplers for, I don't know, 15, 20, 25 years in the O-scale market. I'm sorry, in the HO world and for the past probably five or six years I've adapted it to all the old scale and converted all my cars over. I still haven't done all my engines yet. Uh, they're getting done slowly by Shirley. Um, I did a few passenger cars and I pretty much decided I'm not going to do the passenger cars anymore, especially the 21 inch cars, but we'll talk about that a little later. Um, again, it's the old scale KD coupler and uh, we'll take a look at some of the tools and materials. Okay, as you can see here, the top portion of this parts bin is mostly dedicated to KD couplers and uh, shims or spacers, whatever you want to call them, screws. Uh, got drill bits, taps, KD springs, obviously the KD couplers. Um, I have different sizes of screws. They're all labeled. I only use the 2-56 screw just because it's a little more meaty. Um, I don't use plastic screws. All of these are metal screws, brass screws. Um, some guys use smaller screws there's nothing wrong with that i know the golden gate depot passenger cars come with smaller screws so i just leave those that are in there if i do any work on them um i've bought cars from guys that use smaller screws or plastic screws and uh, many times those plastic screws if you tighten them down too tight they snap right off um, i just like to do everything once and not have to worry about breaking or fixing it again so they're all metal screws, 2-56, various lengths. I have uh, machine screws, wood screws, uh, self-tapping sheet metal screws, all kinds of different ones depending on the application, the car, the locomotive. The spacers, um, they're various sizes. Mostly, mine are just sheet styrene. I cut them on my wife's uh, craft cutter. I just take a sheet of styrene and rip it, and then I put it on my chopper and cut them to length. I don't drill holes in them until I need them because I'm not exactly sure if they're going to use the center holes or the side holes. I'll show you that in a little bit. But you know, I have 10 thousandths, 20, 30, 40, 80, all the way up. And for the locomotive conversions, I'll use uh, the full sheet styrene 100 or 125 and draw and cut out of there. I got the KD couplers, the 800 series. Those are the older ones. I usually don't use the 800 series anymore since they come out with the 700 series, the scale E type couplers. I use these on everything now. Um, anytime I work on an older car that has 800s, 805s, I will uh, replace them with the new uh, 740. Now they have plastic boxes, metal boxes. I only use metal boxes. Like I said, these once you put these together, they're, they're together, they won't bend, they won't break. They're metal, you can file them, you can grind them down, uh, whatever you need to do. No plastic boxes for me. I've tried them, I've used them, don't like them. So everything gets the 740 coupler. They have 743s. These are short shank with very short boxes for tight locations. I've used these on uh, locomotive conversions. I don't like them. I'll show you this in a little bit, but you can see that the swing side to side is not nearly as great as the 740 series. So this one you can see was painted and put together already because it used to be on a locomotive. I took it off because they just don't work as well for me. Um, you got the 745. All this is is the plastic boxes. I bought a bunch of these and uh, I don't even use them anymore. So they just sit in there. The 746 is an extended coupler. It's got a long shank. I use those sometimes on uh, 21 inch passenger cars. 
when I'm having a t hard time with the 072 curves. Sometimes I'll put one of these on there to get a, a little more travel out of there. Uh, they have offset and center uh, offset, which means the uh, shank is at the, at the top of the coupler or at the bottom of the coupler. I don't use those either. I pretty much use 740s. They're medium length, center set knuckles, and I shim everything to make this fit. Now, the crucial tool for converting to KD couplers is your KD coupler height gauge. Without this, you might as well forget doing the conversions because this puts everything at a standard. This keeps all your cars together when they're on the track so they don't come uncoupled because uh, uneven track or the couplers are at the wrong height. You have to have one of these. It's like 12 bucks, 15 bucks nowadays. This is the first thing you should buy. You buy a pack of couplers, buy yourself the KD coupler height gauge. You're going to need it. It's a must. Now here you can see the KD coupler height gauge and how it applies to putting the couplers on the car. This I've had this height gauge for a long time. It came with an 805 coupler. Uh, like I said, these are 740 couplers that I use in my cars now. So the coupler is a little different and the height is a little different between the two couplers because the 740 is a lot thicker than the 805 coupler. But you can change this out. I just haven't done it yet. I don't even know what coupler this the new gauges come with. If they're putting 805s in there or if they're putting the 700 series. Maybe both. I don't know. But you can see here that the top of the knuckle is even. And that's critical. Especially if you guys want to use the uncoupling magnets with KD couplers. The trip pin is the critical height in order to get the knuckles to open. I have a couple different videos on YouTube as well that shows you how they work, how to put the magnets in and all that. But on the other end of the gauge, you can see there's a plate here on the bottom, and that's your trip pin gauge. You want that pin to slide right above that plate without hitting it, because that determines your magnet height. So it keeps this pin close enough to the magnet when it goes over, it pulls this pin to the side, which pulls the coupler open, and that's what creates the delayed uncoupling action. This is also the height, top of the coupler, top of the gauge right there. You got your trip pin set to the right height. Now the 805s, as long as you get this coupler to the right height, your trip pin is good. Every single, I'm sorry, the 740s are like that. As long as you get this 740 and the coupler height right, your trip pin is going to be okay. You're not going to have to bend it. For some reason, every 805 coupler I've ever put on, if you get the knuckle exactly right, this trip pin needs to be bent, either up or down, it's not right. But you can see all the 740s have this little mark on the pin, like after they were assembled at KD, they bent it to get it right. So they, the 805s need a little tweaking, the 740s work just right. And this is what you're looking for, the KD coupler's right, you got the trip pin right, the top of the knuckles, good to go. That's what you're looking for on your cars. Now here we have the two different couplers, the 805 and the 740. The 805 is the older coupler, the one that's been around for years. The 740 is the newer 700 series that's been out for, oh, I don't know, a year or two now. Now you're asking about the difference. You can see here, the main difference that you're going to notice is the original 805 has the knuckle spring on the outside of the coupler. The new 700 scale E type coupler has a hidden spring. The spring is inside. You can also see the body of this knuckle is, is bigger. This is more scale size. And you'll notice here what I was talking about earlier, the trip pins. You can see the different shape of the 740 and you see the mark here on the tip. So KD has already bent this thing at the factory to get it to line up right. Whereas the 805 does not have the mark at the end and the trip pin hangs down a little farther. These are the ones that need to be bent up a little once you get the coupler height right. Now KD sells a trip pin gauge for 10, 12 bucks. Simple pair of needle nose pliers is what I use to bend that trip pin. Once the coupler is mounted to the car, you put it on your track, you check the coupler height. Your pin's a little bit off. If you carefully hold the car with the coupler in your hand, you can tweak that pin just enough to get it to the proper height. Um, if you're not comfortable with that, you can take it back off and bend it up a little bit, put it back on, check it again. But uh, once you figure out how much 
it needs to be bent you can pretty much get it right every single time without even taking it on or off um, again though I don't use the 805s anymore those I got a whole parts bin here full 805s that I don't use many of these are used and off of passenger cars that I've recently converted to the 700 series so these again just stay in there this this bin is constantly getting refilled stocked up you can find them online your local hobby store um, every pack of KD couplers comes with your springs there's two different types of springs you got the knuckle spring for the 805s obviously the 700s don't come with that these just are centering springs they give you more than enough because these suckers go flying if they go flying don't try looking for them just go get you another one because you're not going to find it anyway okay so here you're looking at pretty much all the tools you're going to need to convert your cars to Katie couplers now on th uh, fixed pilot conversions for your engines you might need a few other things but these are your basics um, obviously you got a big a large hammer and a center punch I use those to once I have the the coupler box with the coupler and centering spring installed I use those to stretch out the holes that hold to hold the box together now I know a lot of people don't do that step they just kinda hold the box together with your finger but if you use the hammer and the center punch to hold that thing together then you don't have to worry about falling apart you can drop it on the bench and it won't come apart your little spring don't go flying and you don't have to start over so I'll show you how I do that in a little bit um, we got the needle nose pliers I normally use those to uh, bend the trip pin if needed uh, I have a 3 30 seconds drill bit a lot of people don't use this either it's an extra step that I do that just helps the 256 screw slide through the box so the threads don't grab onto the hole because it's a tight fit and sometimes if you don't drill your hole exactly straight up and down the two holes don't line up perfect so if you get a little movement by using this bit it really helps a lot when it comes to assembly time I got various sizes of tap and drill bits like I said I normally use 256 99 percent of the time I have others for other projects uh, for other cars that already have their own screws in case I, re I need to re-tap a hole or I need uh, a smaller screw so I have various sizes tap and, and bits the tap handle to hold the tap um, I showed you in my uh, parts bin here the various sizes of screws normally um, they're half inch I use the most half inch screws I think these are half inch machine screws these are half inch sheet metal screws um, I use the sheet metal for plastic you don't have to tap that you just drill it screw those in you're good to go if you got metal frames you're drilling through uh, especially on the engines the pilots I'll use the 256 I'll tap the hole then use a 256 machine screw and it holds really tight uh, Phillips screwdriver obviously for the screws I don't like slotted head screws they strip too easy you got a pin vise to drill your holes now I drill most of my holes with the cordless drill it will hold the 256 bit the 330 seconds bit so you can use a pin vise if you're drilling through plastic but you're not going to want to use that to drill through your metal frames or any part of a metal weight on your car bottom uh, I got a center punch a spring loaded center punch here I use that to mark the holes on the bottom of the car to drill so the drill bit don't slide all over because those two holes in the coupler box are crucial um, the file I use that because you'll notice when you pick these up and put them together there's a lot of flashing on the metal end here so you want to make sure you file that down you can use your bench grinder with the wire wheel I just hit it with a file knock it smooth real quick works really well there's not too much on the bottom of the box anymore they've got that pretty much cleaned up but you're going to need that file on this top portion of the box to get all this extra flashing off the top and then when you're done I just touch it up with some black paint so you don't see the shiny silver um, obviously we've talked about the coupler height gauge you have to have this this is crucial and then the various shims of whatever you're going to use minor styrene we'll get into more detail about that uh, micro mark sells some shims that are already pre-drilled in the perfect size for the KD box I think they're 25 thousandths they come in a sheet of 60 I think there's 60 of them for 25 30 bucks I used to use those all the time because they're quick they're easy Atlas cars use two per coupler you grab them you don't drill any holes you don't have to cut anything you're good to go but it gets expensive especially you know when you get a hundred cars or more and you're buying 60 of those things or 
I forget, but they're 30 bucks to order them from Micromark. So I just started cutting my own out of styrene, the different sizes. It takes a little bit longer, but it saves you a ton of money in the long run. Now I know in the HO world, a lot of guys use powder graphite or whatever kind of lubricant. I have never lubed Katie couplers. Um, I did an HO, I used the powder graphite, it makes a mess. The HO ones, uh, you know, obviously they're a lot smaller, a lot lighter. These O scale ones are pretty heavy duty and they got a pretty heavy duty centering spring. I've never had an issue uh, with my Katie couplers where I needed to use some kind of lube on them. I don't paint them because the paint makes the knuckles stick, they don't open right, and if I'm going to do uh, switching with the between the rail magnets, then it's just going to cause problems. Your couplers aren't going to open. So these are the basic tools you're going to need. Once you have all these, you can pretty much convert any car, any engine. 